Welcome to Blissful Consults with Dr. Cami. I am going to go to my next question from Janisa in Hawaii. Thank you, Janisa, for reaching out. Janisa says, I am a 40-year-old single mom. I've done a lot of self-work on my own anxiety and PTSD, but I can see anxiety developing in my daughter. I don't know how to help. Right now, she avoids going to school. We are hybrid. But she is in special education and really needs the support. How do I, how do I support my anxious 10-year-old who avoids going to school? Janisa, this is such a perfect question because it brings up several really important points. One, thank you for identifying yourself as someone who is working through and has worked through PTSD and anxiety. Congratulations for naming that, for putting that up front. Um, it's a very important modeling that you're doing for your, for your daughter, who sounds like she's also trying to figure out her relationship to some anxiety and fear related to going to school. Um, and so, you know, another thing that I think is important here is that our worries can in we can share them within our family and so it sounds like your daughter's worry about school might also be fueling some of your worry about her not going to school and it could be going in a little bit of a circle so i want to think about a model and if you um i'm going to post this model if you just swipe um in the original post you'll be able to see it um, I want to post some thoughts about sort of the cycle that kids will get into when they're when they have emotion based school avoidance. And so basically, a student has starts having some anxious thoughts about school. They then start generalizing that to some anxious thoughts about themselves. So, for example, they might you know, be the night before dinner's done and it's just like, all right, let's get your backpack ready. Let's get going and get ready for school. Um, and all of a sudden the kid is thinking, ooh, I don't really think that I'm gonna be able to get up that early and be able to make it to first period. I always feel anxious in first period. I don't think the teacher really likes me. So then they move on and they start doubting their own ability to cope. So what we would hope and what we would want for a kid to say is, ooh, I don't know if my first period teacher really likes me. I don't know if I want to go to school. And what we'd like for them to say after that is, it's okay. Not everyone has to like me. I'm going to sit next to my best friend and I'm going to get through this class and there are tons of other teachers that like me. It's fine, right? We want them to kind of shift to have some what's called internal locus of control. Then the, so the, the kid says, all right, I'm, I don't think I can go to my first period class. Then they say, I don't think I can handle it. Then they start avoiding first period. And what happens that's part of this anxiety cycle is they actually feel better. And that's what happens to all of us with anxiety. When we avoid the stressor that causes us anxiety, we get an immediate sense of relief. Now, some of us then have feelings of guilt, um, feelings of worry, um, but I've noticed that for students, they often just feel the relief and then they plan to do have that avoidance again because their body wants relief. They want relief. They figured out how to get it. Why not keep getting it? Then, of course, the cycle goes that there's falling behind in schoolwork, loss of friends, and then the cycle just gets more and more exacerbated. So what is the, what's, what's something that can be helpful? So I would say, um, Janisa, that really consider and think back to what was helpful when you were in those early throes of anxiety. Um, and to, to sort of check your own desire to fix. And I know that's very difficult because as parents, we want the best for our kids. We want them in school. We want them to do well. We want them to move through anxiety super reasonable and also we all know as um, individuals who have lived through anxiety the one of the most helpful loving things that a person can do for someone 
who's feeling anxious is to tell them that they are enough, that they are safe, and that both of you together will get this figured out. So often kids will set a very strong um, red line in the sand, either the night before school or the morning of school, because they're feeling a lot of pressure. And one way to eliminate that pressure is to just take things moment by moment by moment. So if there's anxiety the night before school, instead of saying you're going to school tomorrow, we have to do this, you've missed too many periods, the answer might be, that's not a decision that we have to make tonight. What's gonna help you stay grounded tonight? What's gonna help you feel safe tonight? What can we do before bed so you get a great sleep? And then we can figure this out in the morning. And in the morning, it's the same thing. All we've gotta do is get in the car. All we've gotta do is get out of the car. Let's move, let's walk together into the classroom. And it's baby step by baby step. 